Joining us right now is the first of many lawmakers we'll be speaking with today, Texas Congressman Jeb Henserling, who is also the incoming chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. And uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us today. Happy to do it. You know, we hear all of this talk. We hear all the talk that's been leading up to this point. We know it's gone a little quieter at this point, and maybe that's a good thing. But I also know that you've come out and been pretty firm about this. You said that elections do have consequences. The president is getting his revenues. Now he's drawing a line in the sand, though, when it comes to tax rates. Do you agree to go along with something like that, or is that a line in the sand for you as well? Well, no Republican wants to increase tax rates. I mean, it's bad economics. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, if you got an unemployed brother-in-law by raising taxes on your boss, is that boss going to be more likely or less likely to hire your unemployed brother-in-law? We know about the study from the NFIB saying that 700,000 Americans can go from paychecks to unemployment checks. So we don't want to do that. But, Becky, the main, the main problem here is you can't solve this on the tax side. I mean, frankly, it's diversionary. You give the president every single job-harming tax increase that he's requested you run the government for maybe nine or ten days. You can't get there from here. You know, I applaud the president for, for once about two years ago. He said, you know, the drivers of our debt are Medicare, Medicaid, health care. Nothing else comes close. So I'll give him an A for honesty, but an F for effort here. And so what we see is, in many respects, the president uh, doing a bait and switch from what he told the American people, who said he wanted a balanced approach, one dollar of revenue for two and a half dollar of spending cuts. And now it's kind of like, you know, Lucy pulling away the football from Charlie Brown. Now, he has the right to change his mind, but we have the right to call him on it. But America is facing a debt crisis. It is spending driven. And this talk about taxes is, is frankly, almost irrational. Am, am I right to read between the lines? It sounds like you were saying it's a possibility. It could be bought if you see significant spending cuts and, and dealings with the entitlement programs. Well, Becky, what I've said earlier is this is really into current law. We know what's going to happen at the stroke of midnight. I didn't vote for any tax increases. I don't want them there, but I recognize them. It's the difference between me bringing something to the table and recognizing it's on the table. House Republicans are going to work hard to minimize uh, the increase in tax revenues. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that they are done in a way that doesn't harm the economy. An approach like Simpson Bowles, which is to bring down rates, bring down marginal rates, and, and flatten and broaden the, the code start to clear out all the loopholes that unfortunately the president seems to want to protect but again you can't solve it on the revenue side otherwise we're going to be looking at tax rates that would make France's new socialist government blush you can't right. get there from all here. right I'll tell you something chairman I'm not I'm a stock guy I don't even like being here just like you you don't want to talk about taxes so let's forget about this whole tax side let's call it a canard I want three ways to cut spending by 500 billion dollars right now how about we take Social Security up to 68 how about we slash Medicare benefits, and why don't we cut the, the defense budget? Why do we need people in Europe? Why do we need them in Japan? What are we doing with these guys in Korea? I want some answers because I agree with you. Well, go to the web and look for the Republican budget that was written by the chairman of our budget committee, Paul Ryan. You will see these That's savings in there. It's a 30-year, 40-year plan. I want it to know what can we cut right now. No, it actually plan. is because I've read it. Well, guess what? what? So have I, right and I was well, on that committee for four years. Right right Listen, what we, well, well, number one, defense has already been cut. Uh, we can debate how much it should be cut further, but it has already been cut. I mean, that's just a fact. But we added Bottom 14 line, in defense on the Republicans, so that, you know, it kind of happened, that global war of terror. I think we will have to agree that was a good idea. Say again, please. The global war of terror was a good idea. Okay, Four good, trillion, good. That's but it was what a good idea, right? I thought, thought you said. Again, here's what you have to do. Ultimately, if you're going to take America off the road to fiscal insolvency, you're going to have to reform current entitlement programs for future generations, which is exactly what we do in our budget. Medicare is going broke, so security is going broke. The four trust funds, you got one trust fund going broke in about three so years. You got two right now? I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm, I'm happy to put that on the table with every other reform. You know, we can't repeal the, we don't want to repeal the laws of demographics. We have more and more people who are living older and older. Again, Republicans have put forth a system. We believe that my 84-year-old dad and my 80-year-old mom, who've relied on this system, ought to be able to rely upon it. But it ought to be around for my 10-year-old daughter and my 9-year-old sure, son, look, and it agree, won't be. You agreed to raise the deficit no, but here's Jim, here's, here's, here's what needs to happen, you know. We have to put the plan in place today. 
that's what's important is putting the plan in place today. Otherwise, I, listen, I've put forth plans, and I'll be happy to share with you, you know, that have, that have saved over a trillion dollars back when I was chairman of the Republican Study Committee, the Conservative Caucus. I mean, there's not too many, when you ask, where should you cut, where shouldn't you cut? Have, I'd like to be on okay, record saying I'm willing, I'm willing, from Korea? I'm, 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 I'm willing well, to cut anywhere to in the budget to take the nation off the road to bankruptcy. I mean, it's Christmas time. Let's all think about Dickens' The Christmas Carol and the ghost of Christmas yet to come. The ghost well, of Christmas yet to come. City, sir? Well, the ghost of Christmas yet to come is Greece. And now we know that Greece is, fit, you know, 50% youth unemployment, 25% unemployment throughout the nation. You know, from press stories, you see where we're some of the youth are now having to go to subsistence agriculture because they can't find any sustenance within the major urban areas. Now, I don't think America is going to become Greece, but I don't know. But just I don't want to gamble with it. I mean, even Simpson Bowles lays out this proposal to raise the, the retirement age by a year, yeah. another 30 or 40 years down the road. And that's something that's been a non-starter in Washington. Too. Well, it's, it's, it's something that I none of want, us would be dealing with. Yeah, I just got to know how we cut it in the next two years. Yeah. I'm not hearing anything from the Republicans. I want to cut now. Listen, I would be happy to roll. Let's just start out by rolling back the budget to where it was before Barack Obama took office. I mean, we've had a 20 percent increase in federal spending when now all of a sudden apparently GDP growth of, of one and a half to two percent seems to be the new norm. Again, that math doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work out. We can get rid of we can get rid of well, bailout two years funds. Ago, you knew that by keeping the limit for the not for the two percent that you were going to get a trillion deficit each year. Why did you vote for that, perhaps? But, the, but, but Jim, the deficit is the symptom. It is spending that is the disease. Why did you, vote for it? you can't have. Again, you knew the it was deficit. Cause a big the, the, deficit. You could have stopped it then. Isn't it the deficit is. The deficit is not the true problem. The true problem is spending. That's where the true problem is. And already the president has taken us from our historic norm of about 20% uh, percent of GDP up to 24. It's on the way to 40 over the course of the next generation. So why and that's you just why. Say, listen, I'm taking that Social Security up right now, two years from now. Because Wouldn't we, that be the answer if you we want don't, to cut spending? We don't have to do it that way, Jim. We, in fact, as you well know, as you well know, you don't have to cut one penny of federal spending. What you have to do is bend the growth rate. You got to live being, uh, within your means. You got to quit spending money you don't have. Again, we think it is fair that current seniors stay with the program that they have. Future seniors be, gar be given guaranteed coverage options, including traditional Medicare. The math works. It's been certified by the Congressional Budget Office. I would commend you to read it yet again because it doesn't take 40 years I to get the balance. And, and if you would enact our pro growth tax tax measures, uh, you know, any time that we have flattened the tax code, any time that we have cut capital ga uh, gains tax, we've actually had more revenue because more economic growth. Witness the 03 tax relief, witness the tax relief in the Reagan era, the JFK era. You can go back to Calvin Coolidge and find it works. We can get pro-growth revenue. But again, the main point is, unless you deal with entitlement spending, which at one time the president was willing to admit, we just want to do it for those who are totally 55 on and under. We, get it done now. We, we don't believe, and nor do you have to deal with current seniors to get it done. Can I ask you this? There's a, a story on the front page of the Wall Street Journal today suggesting that uh, House Speaker Boehner has done a lot to try and bring his party um, a, a little more into line. Some of the problems, they, they lay out this idea of the unruly freshman elected in 2010. He's done things both from the carrot and the stick perspective. He's removed three Tea Party members from key plum assignments. Does House Speaker Boehner have your full support in whatever he negotiates, whatever deal he negotiates with the president? Well, you can only have one person negotiate in, a, in agreement. And so we back the speaker. I, I would hope 99 to 100 percent of the members of our conference would back the speaker. But in my hip pocket sits my voting card with my picture on it. Like other every other member, I reserve the right to see what the final agreement is. Uh, but I have confidence 
uh, of what the speaker wants to do, and that is to ensure, again, uh, that we're able to create more jobs through pro-growth tax reform, and that ultimately, we, we, we uh, looking at your button, rise above, rise above the stale politics in dealing with our entitlement spending that is ultimately going to drive America bankrupt. So does that mean you would agree to something like maybe a slightly higher marginal tax rate on the upper 2% if you feel like you are getting entitlements and spending cuts down the road that you think are, are worth that trade-off? Well, I don't know what I can do to stop it. I'm going to try to stop it. Again, this was written into current law over a decade ago that the tax that the tax relief is going to expire. So I don't know what I can do to stop that. I mean, yeah, elections do have consequences. Uh, but you know what? The American people, not only did they reelect the president, but they reelected a Republican House. And so we have our own mandate uh, as well. But, you know, when I was chairman of the less than super super committee, uh, I was willing to put revenue on the table. And one of the items I was willing to put it on the table for, Jim, to your point, is to have a gradual increase in the retirement age uh, to help bend the cost curve again to save these programs for my 10-year-old daughter and my 9-year-old son and sustain them for my parents who are in their 80s. I've been willing to do that. But again, we're not going to have any kind of bait and switch. What good does it do? And historically, any time Republicans have agreed to some increase in tax revenue, you know, it's the revenue today and somehow the spending reductions never quite manifest themselves. You know, it, it, I guess I'm dating myself. It's also a little bit like the old cartoon Popeye where Wimpy says, you know, if you'll buy me a hamburger today, I'll no, gladly I repay you next just, Tuesday. I'm just looking for those immediate cuts to go with the immediate uh, tax increases. It just seems right to me. Go, 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 go take a look at our budget. Well, There's pages of it. Next two years. Next two years. Chairman Henserling, we want to thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Okay, our mission critical rise above D.C. coverage continues all day long. Come back in 30 minutes, we're going to sit down with Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. And top of the next hour, Grover Norquist, my old buddy from college, joins us. Will his tax pledge hinder a deal on the fiscal cliff? He rising above, or is that rising above a bad thing? That's true. There are some people who say you got to stick with your convictions. Yeah, maybe the cliff. Say, maybe the cliff. Yeah, stick around. Let's bring Joe and Andrew back into this. Guys, you've been listening to the conversations this morning. Your takeaway, are we closer? Are we further away? Are you hearing things you like? Further away. Uh, further away? Further away. I've yeah. decided, I, 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 I've decided uh, Becky and Jim, that probably the best way to do it, I, I'm kind of in Howard Dean's camp, they, why wouldn't the president go over the cliff and then introduce legislation lowering the rates on 98%? And uh, if the Republicans don't vote for that, he gets the tax-cutting mantle. And I, I don't see how they could vote against that. So, so I, I, cynical. But so true. Yeah. I mean, so, why is that cynical? You know, because because I, I think it's crazy that that's the way things get done in Washington, and we will explain that to the public. That yes, the president I stuck would by get what he wanted. The, the president would we'd be back to there'd be no ifs, ands, or buts. Five hundred thousand up two percent. There'd be none of that. It goes back. He'd get exactly what he wanted at thirty nine cents. Then you can talk about what kind of legislation uh, to pass with, with capital gains, dividends, the lower ninety eight percent, all the things you need to do, and and. But That's to, when for, they'll for have everybody to, deal. to do that, to say we have to go over this fiscal cliff, we and don't that's have what to we're go, going to do over in order to, so that you everybody can, have legislation can say the, You could have legislation ready to introduce that week. Uh, uh, Congressman Hen Hen Henserling, before you go, something like that. Would, I, I mean, I, I hear this from both sides, that if we just go over, the president would introduce this le re legislation to lower rates. Republicans who have signed Grover Norquist's pledge would be able to go along with that and say, this is what we did. I didn't vote to raise taxes. I voted to lower taxes. I mean, is that the most likely scenario? That makes sense. I, uh, uh, listen, I'm, 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 I'm not a Las Vegas bookie, so I'm not going to say what is the most likely scenario. I, I, I don't know. My crystal ball is a little fuzzy. But again, all this talk of tax is marginally irrelevant. You give the president all of the tax increases that he has requested, it's roughly about 2 to 3 percent of his 10-year spending but budget. Even 1.6 trillion at most is maybe what, back of the envelope calculation, 22, 23 percent of the additional, the of the additional Quit deficit. Quit going over that cliff. That's real money. And that's, by the way, that's not that revenue thing. That's the actual spend side that Republicans right. like so much. You Seems got like a, a reasonable proposal. Again, until we start talking about dealing with the long-term 
uh, insolvency of our entitlement programs. Uh, I, you know, all this talk about taxes is just a point of diversion. At some point, at, you the at, 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 at some point, the American people need to understand exactly how much their government is costing. Yeah. They have to understand that programs that they're relying on today are not going to be around tomorrow. And so every single minute we spent talking about 3% of the problem is where we're spending time ignoring 97% of the problem. Oh, and every single day I just saw where the president, where the president says, well, now the modest Medicaid reforms, they're off the table. We've already had others tell us that Social Security for future generations is off the table. Yeah, it's off the table. My children are going to see an automatic 22% benefit cut. You know, my, my, my friends on the, on the Democratic side of the aisle like to talk about fairness. What's fair about cutting my children's Social Security 22%, which is their plan? Again, to deal with the 97% of the problem, you've got to deal with entitlement spending, grandfather the grandparents, but bend the cost curve today. We can get, we can get good in, uh, retirement security and health care at cost that doesn't bankrupt our children. But if we act today, otherwise that goes to Christmas yet to come is Greece. I don't want to see it. All right, Chairman Hinsterling, thank you very much. Jim, you say a reasonable proposal for the fiscal cliff. Modest proposal. I've read things like that before. Yeah, well, children I just, taste delicious. Yeah, I'm talking about the... I, look, I did I mention once the tax increase? No. I'm going for quick spending cuts because we just... Because we agreed to give the rich people that deal two years ago, we added a trillion and then another trillion. I don't know why a Republican ever agreed with that. I'm trying to figure out one reason I'm down here. Who the heck came up with this the trillion cliff? dollars wasn't because of the 2%, was it? Well, no, because it, it kept the deal it from kept happening. The deal. It, oh, it kept the deal from he happening. He said, you know, by not though. giving the 2%, yeah, we're not raising the price of 2%, we added $2 trillion to the deficit. I hate that. Trying to find out how to cut that deficit now, not the future. All right, guys.